Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sari and you are watching my knitting podcast videos. And today I'll start by sharing some uh, good news, something that I have been wanting to tell you for already a long time. But yeah, my book is now off to print and it's been something that I've been working since July last year or on some some level, um, on thought level, it has been uh, in the works for even a longer time. But now it's finally off to print and my publisher opened up the um, pre-orders for the book already two days ago. And I will add a link for the pre-orders um, of the book below this video. So if you want to get your copy among the very first people, then um, I suggest that you pre-order it. It will ship immediately after the book comes off the printer. So I think that is mid-October. So just a few weeks to go. I'm so excited. Uh, I can't wait to hold the physical book in my hand. It's always so different to see the hard copy rather than seeing it um, on your computer screen as a digital version. There's something so special about real books. So I can't wait <laughs> to see it and I can't wait to show it to you. I can't wait to hear what you all think about it. So I'm so excited about this. <laughs> Uh, almost out of breath when I'm telling telling you about it. But yeah, the book uh, is called Softly and uh, there's like a little line softly and, and then timeless and knits and it's um, 22 new patterns. Uh, I haven't released them before so everything is made especially for the book and I think 12 of them are cardigans, sweaters um, and so on, like larger projects and then 10 are uh, hats, socks. Um, there are like one, like this um, long gloves, like uh, mitts, um, fingerless, so I think they're called mitts, not gloves. And a couple of hats, like I said, um, two scarves and so on one color also, or a co not, not really a color, it's kind of like a combination of color and a scarf. And I will start showing them to you in the upcoming weeks. So I thought about filming little videos, um, I think showing 22 uh, patterns in one video is a bit too much. So, so I thought about dividing them in slightly smaller sections. and. We went to Paris to film the book last April, so that's something else that has been really hard to keep secret. Um, if you have been following me on Instagram, you probably saw that I went to Paris um, at the end of end of April, but I don't didn't really post any photos from there, so you might have wondered what I did there. But yeah, we went to take photos for the book and super excited when I saw all the photos. Um, first of all, Paris is so beautiful. It's hard to take bad photos in Paris. So the book is absolutely, um, even though I say it myself, I think it's breathtakingly gorgeous. I'm so happy with the photos, um, to lay out everything about it. I think um, kind of like all, all the pieces fell into the place and and everything is just the way that I wanted it to be. Um, at the moment, like I said, the book is only available for pre-orders through my publisher and I have heard that shipping costs might be a bit uh, pricey, especially if you are um, shipping them overseas. But I'm Confident, I'm hoping that a lot of bookstores and um, yarn shops will pick up my book. So you can always tip your local yarn store about my book and ask them to, to carry it. I'm sure that um, there will be a lot of interest for the book. So I'm hoping, hoping a lot of 
places will carry it. So if the shipping cost feels a lot right now, then as soon as the book comes off the printer and it's officially published, then I'm sure you can get it from other places. But if you want to make sure that you get it among the first people, then I suggest that you pre-order it. And you can always collect people uh, for your, for example, a couple of friends, so you can divide the shipping costs. So if you order more books at the same time, then of course the shipping costs um, per book are less than um, one individual book. I'm also going to um, have some um, places where I'm going to go with the book, but I will tell you more about those really exciting things coming up, a couple of places here in Finland and also overseas. So I'm going to take the book with me and, and all the alternates from the book and, and make a little book tour. So excited about that. Um, but yeah, the book is called Softly, Timeless Knits. And yeah, I will, I will start showing you more about um, the patterns in the book. If you look back a couple of uh, videos from me, um, I was wearing this white pullover with a lace uh, yoke, a circular lace yoke, so that was one of the uh, patterns in the book and also um, I shared a few teasers on my Instagram as well. But anyway, that's the exciting news. I'm so happy to finally have the book out. Um, I think I talked about this earlier, but with the first book, it was kind of like this. I, I talked about this a few videos back. Um, it was one of those projects where everything that can go wrong went wrong. And I was so, I, I was feeling so down after it. I kind of like said to myself that I'm never ever going to write another book. So this was it. It's not worth it. It's too much hustle and too much heartache and too much trouble and it's it's not worth it. But then I changed my mind. I started to think kind of like, well, if this is the only book that I'm going to make. So if, if this is my kind of like legacy, if this is the only only book, then I don't I don't I don't want I, I don't want that. So I don't want that to be my book because I know that uh, there's so much more about me and I had such a clear vision about what I wanted the the book and the needs to be and I decided that this time I want to do it alone so that um, it's more like my vision and I don't have to do comprom compromises with anybody so I can I can do just me. So then I contacted my new publisher so I changed publishers also and I contacted Cozy with a book idea that I had and luckily they thought that my idea was good as well. So last summer I started making the designs for the book and I've been working on it um, for the whole winter. So it was quite a lot of work to do like um, at the same time I have to because like I, I talked about this as well. So this is my only uh, work so I don't like go to a day job and then design in the evenings like I used to do. So uh, for the past two and a half years I've been self-employed. So this is the only thing that I do and this is the only way that I get money coming in. So I couldn't just like press pause on everything and now I'm not going to release anything new for the whole winter because I'm working on the book. But I had to kind of like keep my business going at the same time and work on the on the book at the same time. So it was quite a lot of hustle <laughs> at many times and there were moments when I thought that what have I done and why am I doing this? Uh, or is it if if this is even worth it? But now that I see the end result, it was every 
single bit of wood, all the all, all the sweat <laughs> that I have put into it. Um, I can't wait to show the book to you. Um, I'm usually a very humble person. Um, I, it's uh, also a very uh, like Finnish quality. Finnish people don't brag about themselves, so it's very hard for me to do. But I have to just say that I'm so happy about the book. It's so gorgeous. Even though I say it myself, I'm so super happy about it. It's every bit as gorgeous as I imagined it to be. And I'm already starting to kind of cry because I'm so happy about it. And I really hope that you all will um, love the book as much as I. It's also so important for me to kind of like put out this book because in the past years there have been so many people who have been kind of like putting me down and also a lot of people who have been trying to take advantage of me and my kindness. So this is something I wanted to show that uh, I, I can do this. This is me and, and this is what I'm capable of and if I get to do me and nobody is um, putting reins on me then this is what I'm capable of and I wanted to show that to everybody and I think the book is exactly that I am showing everybody um, what I can do and yeah. I'm so happy <laughs> about the book. But yeah, that's about uh, the book. Uh, and like I said, I will show more about it to you in the upcoming videos. Um, this has been kind of like, at the same time, many things have moved really slowly. Um, but when things started to happen, then they happened really quickly. And kind of like, I wasn't prepared for all that. So, I haven't prepared anything, even though I had the whole year, a whole summer uh, for me to, like, for example, film videos showing all, all the knits. <laughs> I haven't done it, I don't know why. Maybe in, in some... Se some oh, Luna wants to come again. So Luna is here. So, kind of like I still struggle with... Um, I don't know if it's uh, kind of like an imposter syndrome. I'm still always afraid that that it's not going to happen and somebody is going to take something the, the thing away from me and um, even though I've been working on the book for, for a long time for some reason it's not going to happen after all so maybe it's been also kind of like this self-doubt that I have that uh, I haven't done work in, in preparation because some part of me has believed that um, until I have the book in my hand, then um, it, it's not real. If you understand what I mean, I don't. I know it's stupid, but but um, even after all these years, I'm so many times so insecure about a lot of things. But yeah, um, I could show you what I've been knitting lately. I actually I finished the look pullover. To show you. So this is how it looks like and I wanted to add like this long ribbing to the bottom and it also has like this contrasting stripe also at the end of the sleeves so I wanted to have like these oversized sleeves that kind of go over my knuckles rather than having like bracelet length so this is how it looks like and the yards that I chose for this one were Sunness Garn Alpaca Silke, uh, this is the colorway 2521 um, over here. So it's a fingering weight yarn and then I added Sunness Garn Tin Silk Mohair to it. And this is colorway 3021. So over there. I've been working in the garden so that's why I have a um, black fingernails. I should have washed them before I started filming. Sorry about that. And also I combined it with Alpaca Silke from um, Sabnes Garn. So this is the same same yarn. 
Same yarns as these, but a different colorway. So this is the black colorway, so 109, 1099, and this is also 1099. I had this much leftovers from what, what I bought. So I was actually planning to make a matching um, little cowl. So I'm going to start cast on for that today because um, we decided to take a kind of like this extempore trip to Tallinn tomorrow. So we we'll bought the tickets the day before yesterday and we're going to take the ship from Helsinki to Tallinn uh, tomorrow morning and go to a hotel for one night and then come back um, on Sunday evening. Just like this quick trip. Um, my son won the um, tickets um, at, uh, at his football match, so there was kind of like this raffle and he won the tickets, so we decided to use them now and, and go, go to Tallinn. So I was going to cast on for the call so I have something small to take with me so I don't have to bring a whole sweater when we are walking around the, the town and um, I have something small with me that I, I can I can knit on the go. And I also cast it on a second version of the same pullover. So it's here. So I'm going to use um, this grey as the base color and then I have Luna is sitting on the other no it's behind her. So I'm going to add white stripes. So I'm going for for like this more more neutral um, or like lo lower contrast uh, version. So this has kind of like really really high contrast between the colors. So I want to choose something that has a lower contrast. So this is Knitting for Olives Mary now in the colorway Pearl Grey and Soft Silk Mohair in Morning Haze. And then um, also Knitting for Olives Mary now in Soft Silk Mohair. The colorway is called Snowflake. So this is going to be my second version of the Lucke Fullover. And I also have sent yarns to one of my sample knitters who will make this um, same pattern for me. But I want it because this one has kind of like the light color as the main color and the dark color as the contrasting color. So I wanted to do it the other way around. So uh, she's going to knit a version for me that is like um, cognac color and like dark brown and then these are very light beige colors so I'm probably going to take this one to Tallinn with me as well. I haven't like I said in my previous video uh, ever since I decided to start making these videos again every week or at least every two weeks uh, I felt really self-conscious because I don't have so many new things on my needles to show, but I'm again showing the same things. Um, I don't have really uh, anything else on my needles. I've been working on the Karina show a bit. Um, I'm almost at the midpoint, so I'm going to start decreasing on it. I think I left it downstairs. Maybe I will go and get it a bit later. And here's the hat that I knit at the Oppenheimer movie, but um, kind of running out of yarn over here and I should I, I should um, take the second skein that I have and take it from actually over here behind me so I should put it um, on my yarn swift and cake it and I've been too <laughs> lazy to do that so I haven't um, continued working on the hat because of that because I haven't manage to to cake the yarn. Yeah, I know. Just finished the bottom ribbing of this Alvar pullover this morning. So this is something that I have been showing you for a few times. So the body is now ready and I'm going to um, 
pick up the stitches for the first sleeve tonight, but probably I'm probably not going to take this project with me to Tallinn because it's quite big, quite heavy. And like I said, I want to have something more portable with me so I can carry it in my purse so I don't want to carry a big bag. And this is already quite heavy, so I don't want to carry unnecessary weight with me. But here you can see the pattern. I haven't blocked this yet. I steamed it uh, very um, lightly after I finished the bottom hem. So you can already see the pattern opening up. And this is the same pattern that I used for my Alvar Dog Sweater last year. So same exact Gansey inspired knit and pearl patterns on it. And for this one I used Le Chart Quit Ricot. The colorway, uh, the base is called Salem. I see it here. Color is natural, and this is a merino yak and silk yarn. It's um, so nice to knit. I think I've mentioned that every time um, I have showed this sweater um, on YouTube and talked about this. It's just so nice. It's almost, almost maybe almost too slippery. So um, it's a bit, bit hard. Um, to knit, I started working it uh, with a, a Chaya Wu, um, like metallic needles and it was too slippery, the stitches were uh, slipping off the needles all the time so I changed to uh, bamboo needles and after that it worked a bit better but it's so smooth and so slippery but uh, I still I love it. I know that as soon as I finish this one, I'm going to be kind of like living in it for the whole winter. I think Luna wants to live in it too. Seems like it. But that's kind of like everything that I'm knitting at the moment. I will show you some things that I um, released um, recently and also two upcoming patterns that are the next two patterns that I'm um, going to release. So I'll just change into the cooter wrap and show that to you. So I just released this cooter wrap pattern yesterday and you have, if you have been watching my YouTube channel for a longer time you might remember that I already started making my wrap cardigan uh, at the beginning of the summer and it was first going to be a short sleeved one so I wanted to have something to wear um, over like summer dresses or, or sleeveless tops but I was so busy doing other stuff during the summer and I wasn't really uh, into knitting with mohair during the hottest days. So this was something that I worked on every now and then and then I put it aside for a while. And also the pattern was a bit more complicated to write because of all the all the things that happen at the same time. So you at the same time you increase for the front, you make the lace and you should also shape the armhole. So there were quite a lot of things happening at the same time that I wanted to kind of like write down, figure out, or at least figure out how to write, write the pattern down before working the whole sample. So that's why it took me a bit longer than it usually takes for me to knit a sweater. And when I finally finished working the body and I was ready to make the sleeves, then I realized that it was already August and the pattern release after test knitting and, and so on would uh, be at this time of the year. So now it's already end of September. So I thought that maybe it's better to make a long sleeve version of this. So that's why I decided to knit uh, full length sleeves for my quarter wrap. Um, so if you're interested in the pattern and how I um, 
figured out how to write the increases. The pattern has kind of like this sheet, uh, cheat sheet that um, charts all rows. So you can work it row by row. It tells you whether you should um, increase on the front or uh, on the armhole or both. So it's super easy to actually follow. I had a couple of test knitters who were beginners. So these were like kind of like their first um, sweater project and they managed with it perfectly. So I th I'm really confident that the, the pattern is written so that it's now super easy to follow. And also the, the cheat sheet has always the row number of, for the chart. So you always know which chart row you are on and like I said whether to increase or not. So that's how I wrote, wrote the pattern. And like I said this is the Kutar wrap and it's another pattern in my ever-growing Kutar family. So I made the original Kutar pullover already a few years ago. It's almost three years actually. Um, and when I started to knit, knit it at least. And um, it's been, well, my most popular pattern um, so far at least. And then I made a matching Kutar tee that I actually have it here. It's here. This is the Kutar t-shirt. It's over here. So this is how the yoke looks like. So it has this lace pattern over the yoke. It has folded over there, so now it has like this folding lines. I haven't ironed it, so I should block it a bit to make it less crumbly. But yeah, so this is the Kutar t-shirt. And then I made the Kutar top. This is the neon version of it, so I also have a um, version that has uh, is in in um, light beige color. And for this one, I have actually made a YouTube tutorial. So if you want to make a cooter top, you will find the tutorial that I made, and that takes you through all the steps. So again, it has the same lace pattern on the front that I used. On the sides, and I also have a matching beret and also a sock pattern. So this is the Kutar wrap, and lately I've been always adding a little bonus for my YouTube watchers. So if if you want to purchase this pattern or any other of the Kutar patterns, then you can use uh, the code Kutar Love. Write it all together at Ravelry checkout or in my web shop on sardinordland.com and you will get a 25% discount on all of the Kutar patterns. So you can only buy one or you can buy all of them but you get 25% off and the code is valid until the end of the month. So end of September 2023. So Kutar um, I used Knitting for Olives uh, Soft Silk Moo Hair and Merina, so Merina is a fingering weight yarn uh, for this one. Um, the colorway was called Putty for both of them, so the Moo Hair and the uh, Merina were both in the same colorway. And I actually I used 5mm needles, so that's I think US size 8 needles, so the, the fabric is quite airy and also it makes this quite quick to knit and it has like this i-cord belt and there's a little little hole on the side so you can put the belt through the hole and then just like wrap it wrap it around your waist and tie it like this so that's how you tie it um, I actually also really like it like this, like an open cardigan and not thinking that I should 
actually make a second one but leave out the hole and leave out the belt so I could just have it open like this. I think it looks really nice this way as well. Um, if the both of the belts were short like this then um, I could just keep this one open but the um, second belt that goes around my waist is so long that it actually it doesn't quite reach my toes but almost and I'm sure I would trip it on it, I would sit on it, it would get stuck like um, between the doors and uh, I think our cats would <laughs> run after me and try to play with the bells so maybe I will make a second one but leave out the bells yep Kutar wrap cardigan so here oh I forgot to say that um, the sleeves are made with short rows so they look like set in sleeves but it's totally sleeveless so you first work the back you start at the back neck work until the armholes then we pick up stitches on both shoulders work them until the armholes then join everything together and work the body not in a round but back and forth but everything together so it's just one piece after that and then for the sleeves just pick up stitches around the sleeve opening and then the sleeve cap is worked with short rows and that is also explained in the pattern so I like using German short rows I think that's the easiest way but you can always substitute the short rows for another method if you don't like the way that I do it but yeah no seams even though it looks like a set in sleeve but it's totally seamless so here's another new pattern that is coming from me it's currently being test knitted and the pattern is coming out next week so this is the wood and amount of pullover I didn't need this sample myself so I have a couple of sample knitters um, who need some things for me because I don't have time to knit everything and sometimes I'm bad at um, knitting things that I have already made so I'm kind of like the person who always wants to create something new so if I have to do something again for example in a different color or so then I get very easily bored. It has to be something super engaging for me to make more than um, one sample or then I have to get like a super good inspiration for another colorway to use or color combination or something like that for, for me to knit at the same pattern again. So in situations like that I often use sample knitters and for example I made this um, wood and amone tea at the beginning of summer and then I realized that I would really like to have this as a sweater version as well so here you can see how it looks like this um, yarn is slightly thicker so I had to um, change the gauge for for this one and also this one has the bubbles but for this one I left out the bubbles or I asked my sample knitter to leave out the bubbles so that the lace pattern shows better but it looks kind of like these little leaf patterns that are growing on the yoke and yeah this is the wood anemone pullover and like I said the pattern is coming next week and this is also this is knitted seamlessly from the top down so you start with the neck band and you can either fold it double like I did but, or if you don't like double folded neck bands you can always leave it out or make a turtle neck or funnel neck neck bands are really easy in my opinion to change um, into different ways if you don't like that but one reason why I like these double folded necklines especially for sweaters with round yokes so if you don't have that then it, the neckline starts uh, really easily to stretch so it doesn't have any structure here at the, at the neck to, to keep it um, like in place so very easily it might happen that it starts to pull and uh, kind of like 
the, the line of the ribbing becomes part of the pattern and it stretches. So the yolk starts to um, kind of like melt down your your uh, body. Uh, so that's why I kind of like like doing these double folded neck bands and because they have the seam where you sew in the, the neck band on the other side so that seam and also if you use um, long tail cast on rather than for example tubular cast on it because long tail cast on is less stretchy than tubular cast on so that is also one reason um, why I like these kinds of neck bands for for circular yoke sweaters. If you want to have um, unfolded neck band but um, you don't and you want to uh, avoid the stretching then there's also the option that you cast on the stitches for the neck band with for example long tail cast on method. Skip the ribbing and start the um, lace pattern immediately and then later on you can pick up stitches along the neck band and work the neck band the other way uh, like up then you have the cast on edge over here which is less stretchy and then you can for example bind off the stitches using a tubular bind off so that will also help with the stretching so a little tip but yeah that's why i have the double folded neckline but you can always leave that out if you don't want it and like i said you can make it longer like a um, mock turtleneck or or a actual turtleneck so whatever you want but yeah so it has a lace pattern over here and i'm super happy about the color that i chose for this one so this is a uh, lana gato VIP and it was kind of I don't remember the colorway name I will write all the colorway names yarn names everything below this pattern uh, like I always do but I think it was kind of like a mix of um, merino and cashmere anyway it's super soft and I added a strand of um, Filgolana Tilia to it so it has a fingering plus mohair it's super soft and I absolutely love this color, but this is also one of uh, again one of those colors that are super hard to photograph, so it doesn't really show in photos. Uh, I think it looks just like really blue, but uh, all the all the details get a bit lost. So I might ask one of my sample knitters to work this one for me in another colorway maybe like a lighter lighter colorway i've uh, often talked about why i so many times choose very neutral colors for my samples well first of all i really like neutral colors uh, i prefer them to very very bright colors but also often stitch patterns show the best if you have like an off white or or gray or very light light colors so that uh, you get the best visibility for for like cables lace um, and so on black is probably the hardest especially in photos it's really hard to photograph something that is black so that it shows all the details you have to have a really stark light coming to the pullover for it to actually like show all the details and it's super hard to take good photos of black knits i would probably knit a lot more darker um, sweaters if it wasn't for the instagram photos the pattern photos promoting the patterns but the, the black and very dark colors are super hard to photograph it's super hard to see the details everything gets lost even though if you see them in real life like real life um, and there's always like when people move there's um, light catching the pattern so for example if I turn like this it's a bit hard for you to see the pattern over here but when I move and the light catches the sweater it catches the movement then you can see what, what's going on in my in my sweater 
uh, totally different than if I was just standing still and especially if I was turned a bit away from the light. So it's super hard to photograph even though they look really good in, in like reality when people are moving and light is catching the fabric but for photographs it's super hard and it's also the same thing if you have very bright colors then many times camera doesn't like have enough um, it can't separate the colors so well so everything becomes just like unicolor so you lose the contrast you lose the details but if you have like more neutral colors the stitch definition is usually better for for um, photographing so that's one of the reasons why I often choose very neutral colors and also I've talked about this earlier um, if I have a very bright color then people get really focused in the color so that's always the first thing that people notice when they see something that you are wearing or new pattern a yarn it's always the color that that's the first thing that you see and after the color you start to see details so a good example I think of this is that if you have the same pattern in two different colors um, let's say one is white and one is really bright pink but it's the same pattern and then you have for example two um, slightly similar but still very different patterns that are in the same color so two white sweaters let's say both have cables but they are still different cables different sweaters or two pink uh, sweaters with cables different cables and you ask people for example which are the same so I think most of people if they answer quickly they say that the, the uh, sweaters with the same color are the same and the sweater with the different colors are different even though they are the same but in different color but people first look at the color and not not the pattern and even with the, if you have the two white sweaters and the two pink sweaters and you ask which of these are the same, people probably say that the pink sweaters are the same and the white sweaters are different because people are so focused on the color pink rather than the color white. Um, for the white pullover you start to um, see beyond the color uh, more quickly and you see that the, the details are different but for the pink you are so focused on the pink that you don't see the other details and see that they are actually different. Um, so, the point of this uh, 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 that I'm talking about is that, for example, this sweater, um, I think people are first drawn to this color and after that they start to see the details of it. Um, and for some people it might be really hard to imagine this in some other color because the color is so overpowering. So that's why I often like to choose neutral colors because then you see beyond color. So you see the actual design and it's kind of like an empty palette for you. So it's easier to put in color than take a color out. So it's easier to imagine a white sweater in pink than a pink sweater in white, if you can get what I mean. But anyway, I've been rambling about a lot of uh, other things that I was going to talk about. Uh, color theory is one of my favorite subjects. I absolutely love it. I could talk about it for for such a long time. There's so much that goes into into colors, and yeah, like I said, I absolutely love colors. I like love talking about colors. I love how the colors choose um, change um, the mood of, of of knits. But yeah, this is the wood anemone pullover and pattern is coming out next week. And the last thing that I wanted to show to you today is the Colette pullover. So it's 
this one and I think I've already showed this to you again um, on my YouTube channel a couple of times but this one is releasing at the beginning of October so in just a few weeks and I think it's probably my favorite thing to wear at the moment so it's simple and classic enough that it kind of like goes with everything it goes to every occasion um, I've been wearing it just around the house with jeans uh, I've been wearing it uh, to appointments to the city to lunch with my friends um, and so on I'm going to take this with me to Tallinn because I think it's really nice it goes with everything it has kind of like this loose fit so it's perfect for this time of year it's not too hot also the little lace stripes keep it kind of like very light and I love the dropped shoulders and yeah so I made the um, Colette t-shirt at the beginning of summer it was one of my favorite things to wear during the summer and actually still wore it yesterday it's still quite warm here in Finland so I wore this and I just put the trench my trench coat over it when I went outside so it still works for for this time of year I especially love knitting with with silk yarn so this was knitting for olives pure silk um, it's a fingering weight yarn, so I held it double, so it kind of like matches a DK weight yarn. But I think silk is really nice because when it's hot, it feels cool, but when it's cool, it feels warm on your skin. So it kind of like adjusts to your body temperature and feels a bit different regarding um, the, how what the um, temperature is outside so to call it t-shirt I actually I made um, a tutorial video for the call it t-shirt as well so you can easily check that out and the construction for the colette tee is the same as for example here's the Vivian tee and also the Cardina tee pattern so you can also use that tutorial for for those patterns and of course as soon as this one launches it's almost the same the only difference is that this one has like this double folded neckline and of course longer sleeves so the sleeves have a couple of decreases for shaping them but other than that it's so different to the t-shirt that you can also use the t-shirt tutorial for this one and for this one I use knitting for olives um, merino and their uh, soft silk mohair the merino was in colorway cream and soft silk mohair in colorway um, marzipan so it's kind of like this off white a bit on, on a beige side so the color pattern is releasing um, in a couple of weeks. Um, I think that's everything I had for today. Um, I will add links for the pre-order of my book below this video. So if you want to check that out. And also links to everything that I have mentioned in this, this video. And if you want to buy the cooler wrap cardigan pattern or any of the cooler patterns remember to use the code cooler love uh, to get the 25% discount until the end of September but yeah that's everything for today thanks for watching and if you like my videos remember to subscribe to my channel so you will always get a notification when I put out a new video thanks for watching bye